So uh, yeah, tell us a little about, bit about yourself and uh, how you ended up at IRT. Okay. Uh, my name is John Reese. Uh, I'm a graduate student in the MFA Glass program here at RIT. And uh, my undergraduate degree is in architecture. Uh, and I spent about six years working for an architecture firm in Horseheads and living in Corning. And while there, I started blowing glass at the studio at the Corning Museum of Glass. And after about three years of that, I decided that uh, I was ready to go back to school and pursue glass uh, full time. So here I am. Awesome. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about the, the department here at RIT, the glass blowing department? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a few years ago, uh, they did a survey uh, of the top glass blowing programs or glass art programs in the U.S. And RIT was tied for number two uh, with Alfred University. And the facilities here are phenomenal. The instructors are top-notch, uh, world-renowned artists. And um, we tend to bring in a pretty diverse group of students, both graduate and undergraduate. The undergraduate program is geared a little more towards the technical aspects of glass art whereas the graduate program is almost exclusively conceptual, um, although there is a little bit of technique that is brought into that as well. So by most of, the, most of the time, by the time you get to the graduate level, most people have already sort of been through the, the technical exercises of the undergraduate program. Great. And uh, can you tell us a little bit, a bit about the uh, Tiger Paperweights that oh, you yes. created? So, uh, so this is the, the Tiger's Eye Paperweight, uh, which is available at Shop One Squared. And, and while I was meeting with the folks at Shop One, they had said how um, you know people really like to buy things that are tailored towards RIT. And I started thinking about the Tiger and uh, some of the qualities that the Tiger embodies, such as um, patience, um, perseverance, uh, strength, and things like that. And so I started doing even more research and thinking about the tiger's eye. Um, I wanted something that would be sort of applicable to the shape of a paperweight. And after I did the research, I went into the hot shop and started um, making uh, prototypes. And this is what I had come up with. Uh, this is one of the, the early prototypes for it. Um, there are some newer ones that have uh, colors that are very specific to RIT. It's got a, a very vibrant orange to it. Um, but the idea was is to have tiger stripes along the outside of it um, and then come in and feature sort of um, a colored iris and then to use a bubble as a pupil. And it provides some really interesting magnification of the interior of the paperweight through the eye. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. All right, really cool. So you're gonna take us through uh, the glass blowing process? Absolutely. All right, let's get going. Cool. Thank you. The hand tools used in glass blowing haven't changed in about 3,000 years. out of the furnace at about 2100 degrees and the glass is clear um, allowing us to use different frits which are um, crushed up colored glass powders and chunks of colored glass. After the glass is rolled in frit it's reheated in a reheat furnace which melts the color into the larger body of glass. Metal optic mold is used, which is a steel cup with metal ribs on the inside of it. Glass blowing takes a lot of hand eye coordination, and you're constantly turning the glass not only to keep it on center, but also to keep the molten glass from dripping on the floor. A depression is made in the end of the glass, which will catch the air bubble, which will end up being the pupil. Tiger's Eye Paperweight. A hand tour 
which is sometimes used to spot heat in various areas. Alright, so that was awesome. Now, if I want to do that, where would I begin? Um, well, if you're a CIAS student, you could come up and take one of our elective uh, glass blowing or kiln casting classes. There's a lot of different ways that you can work with glass, um, so you just find us on SIS and sign up for one of the classes. Um, undergraduate classes are typically in the evenings. Uh, there are two new uh, graduate elective classes being taught this coming year um, that will be pretty exciting. We'll be doing a lot of experimental stuff uh, to work with people's uh, thesis and some different things. Uh, yeah, so any upcoming events that you guys are hosting? Um, yeah, we do a pumpkin sale, which is in the fall. Um, typically in, towards the end of September or early October and it's done in conjunction with the Women's Council. Um, so what happens is, is all the glass students get together and produce the pumpkins. The Women's Council will host the sale which is at the Red Barn here at RIT. And then um, what we'll do is we'll split the profits. Um, the Women's Council receives a portion of it which goes towards women who've overcome adversity to attend RIT. And then our profits go to fund our visiting artist program, um, which we have world-class artists coming in from all around the country, from other countries sometimes. Um, they'll demo their techniques for us, show us how to do some of the things that they do, critique our work, talk about you know what's going on in the larger art world uh, outside of school. So, awesome. Well, yeah. thanks for everything, John. Right. Thanks, thanks for taking us around. And right. uh, it was good seeing you. You too.